let's create some files. We're going to use an editor called Vim, V-I-M. The Vim editor is installed by default on your Macintosh. It is a tool that allows us to create files and edit those files and save the file contents. In this case, under my Daryl directory, I'm going to create a file called new file. And I'm going to just name it newfile.txt. If I do this in return, it'll open up the Vim editor to the newfile.txt file and allow me to edit. Here, I'm in the newfile.txt file. Now, if I want to edit in this file, I hit the I key. I will put me into the insert mode and indicate it down here with insert. At this point, I can add characters. I can back up using my backup key to delete those characters. I can return to add a new line. I can return multiple lines to skip if I would choose to do that. Once I'm done editing, I can hit the escape key and go back to the default mode. The default mode allows me to navigate through the file. Now you can see my cursor moving up and down. If I want to move down through the file, the J key will do so. If I want to move up in the file, the K key does that. So this editor allows you to keep your hands on your keyboard. So J moves down through the file, as long as there's a line, and K moves up through the file, line by line. Now if I want to move right on a line, I can use the L key. L key moves right. If I want to move left, the H key moves left. So right L, H left, J down, K up. Now if I want to add a new piece of information at the end of this line, I would normally just write or L key over to the end of the line, hit the I key to insert. Now notice I'm sitting right on the E, so I would use the right arrow to line over, and then maybe the space to add additional information. And again, once I'm done editing at this point, I would hit the escape to go back to the default mode instead of insert. And if I want to save this information, I can hit the shift key and type a colon. Shift colon and then W will write the file. It'll leave the file open if I just use this. So I can say that and I get the response new file.txt has been written. If I want to close out of this file, I can hit shift colon, write Q quits. It writes the file, it quits the file, and I'm back at my prompt. And if I list this directory now, now by the way, I'm using A, so that allows me to see the dot and dot dot at the top of this directory listing. Sometimes I use LHA and sometimes I just use LH. It's just a habit. So at this point, I can see that at the very bottom, I've got a new file.txt with permission settings of read and write for root read for staff, and read for guest user. Now, if I want to change certain permission settings on this new file, I would do chmod, and let's say that I want 755. When I execute 755 on new file.txt, return and list the directory again, I can see now that new file.txt has read, write, execute for the root user, which I happen to be at this point. I have execute and read only for the group user and execute and read only for the guest user. I can change those by saying something less than seven. chmod, I could say 754 new file.txt return, list this directory, and I can now see that I have changed the permissions to read, write, execute for root, read, execute for staff, and only read, which is what's represented by the four, for a guest user. And if I want to go back into the new file.txt and add additional information, I simply type vim new file.txt and return. It'll open the file. I can navigate down to a new line, hit the insert, and start adding text. Again, as I'm finished with this file, I hit the escape key, shift, colon, write, if I want to just save this and leave it open, or WQ, 
to save and quit the file, and I'm back to my root prompt. If I want to remove the file that I just created, I would type rm. Again, I'm not having to use the dash r switch, which is recursive in case I'm deleting a directory. And by the way, if you see this list here, d is not indicated here, which means this is a file, not a directory. So if I'm going to remove that file, rm space the name of the file, and it'll remove this file as soon as I execute. Now, another nice little feature, just for your own point of reference, is that I can actually use wildcards. If I want to remove anything that says new, I would back up and use the asterisk, and it will remove any files that start with NEW and anything wild after that. So if I return here or enter and list this again, you'll note that my new file.txt is now gone. And that is how to use the VIM editor, how to open a file and enter text in the insert mode, how to escape back to the default mode, how to navigate through a file, how to close and save, or how to just save and leave the file open, how to change a few more permission settings, and we will do additional permission settings as we go through our lessons, and how to remove a file and remove a file using a wildcard.